Alright guys, looks like we're going to record this video one more time. Okay, so, this is our part right here. Um, I added these chamfers, uh, the print doesn't actually call for them. I, I thought it just kind of looks looks better with chamfers. Uh, plus you don't have any sharp corners. And uh, it just looks cool. It, it, it's a very subtle, uh, it's a very subtle feature, but it makes the perceived value of a part go up. <sighs> okay, so, anyways, added some chamfers. Notice there's none on top, just just on the sides. Uh, that's to prevent you know from actually having to add a chamfer tool. Okay, so we're gonna do the cam on this part. Uh, so go to the manufacturer. We're gonna go to setup. The stock size we're using is two inch by two inch. So I'm gonna go to fixed size box. And it's gonna be two inch by two inch by one inch tall. And I can actually drop this down some. I put it on Z positive um, and clear out this offset right here. Notice Oh, my Z's on the wrong spot. Here, let's, let's undo that. Uh, first thing let's do, let's, let's get our orientation right. So I'm going to go select Z axis plane. So I'm going to click the top of the part. And I'm going to select the X axis. And the X axis is actually good. We're going to leave it like that. Alright, so we'll go back to the stock tab. Width two inches by two inches by one. Let's see. That looks right. Okay. Let's offset this um, fifty thousandths. That gives us fifty thousandths to face off of it. And we're gonna go back here, and we're gonna select our origin. Um, you could you could have the origin on the model itself or the stock. It would probably actually be easier to have it on the stock because you wouldn't have to make any offsets or any calculations. Uh, I usually put it on the model box point, and what I mean is my my stock overhangs, but I put my origin like right here, right now. All you have to do is calculate the distance from here to here. And offset that in your uh, work offset G54 uh, X and Y distance. Uh, that's usually the way I like to do it, but we're gonna keep things simple today. Uh, I'm gonna put this on stock box point, and I'm gonna click stock point, and I'll put it at this corner. So that'll be our X and Y zero. And if you notice. We have material, our Z0 is on top of the stock. So we have 50,000 as a face off. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and name this off one. And we'll start off with a face. I'm going to select the tool. Uh, you guys said you were going to use a 3 quarter inch in mill, so. Go ahead and change that, and I'm gonna go ahead and change the cutting data on this so I don't keep on having to change uh, the speeds and feeds within each toolpath. Um, let's see, it's aluminum. Um, assuming you are using a two fluter for aluminum, uh, high speed tool still. Um, we'll go. We'll go three thousand. It's a good starting value. Cutting feed, yeah, 20 inches a minute. That in middle to handle a lot of force. Make this tool one. Hit accept. Bruce, sit down, dude. All right, geometry, 
don't really have to select anything. It's, it's going to go ahead and select the stock face height. I'm going to turn it on the front view and this bottom height is what we want to get right. So um, as long as that is on the face of the part, you're good. Uh, we'll go multiple depth. No, actually, we're only taking 50,000, so one pass is good. And we'll try this out. So we'll simulate it. Looks good. I'm picky about these names. So I'm going to take that, make it just say face. Uh, just double checking, making sure we're, we're actually recording here. Uh, okay, so we're going to walk the end mill around and cut the outside perimeter. So I'm going to use a 2D contour for that. And notice my speeds and feeds are already uh, preset. That's because I changed uh, the, the presets on the tool. Okay, geometry. So I'm going to select the contour. And I'm going to move the... I'm going to select the bottom of the model. And the reason why is because I can't select the top because they'll want to select this uh, chain of geometry. And I want to walk all the way around. Height tab, uh, bottom height. Let's go. Let's go model bottom. Whatever you do, don't put it on stock bottom because you'll you'll cut into the vice jaws. You, you gotta have some kind of material to hold on to. Uh, model bottom, and let's go extra uh, fifty thousands. Uh, depending on what vice jaws you're using, you should have enough material where. Um, you know, you're not going to cut into the vice jaws. Okay, so we're going to name this outside parameter. Now, if you're using a smaller end mill, you want to take more passes. Uh, three quarter end mill is fine. You'll be able to handle that no problem. Um, but if you're going to use a 3 8 end mill or a quarter inch, you know, you probably want to add some roughing passes and multiple depths. Um, you know, let's go ahead and add a compensation uh, in the wear. That will, that will basically, you know, say the part comes out a little oversized, you know, it's 3,000 is too big. You can, you can offset the, make it offset in the controls of the machine. All right, it looks good. What I'm looking for is to make sure when I simulate it that it's dropping down next to the part, then feeding in. So let's rewind this a little bit. So we're dropping down next to the part. Then when we get to our Z distance, we kind of do a radial vertical lead in. And we just lead right into that part and gauge the material. But remember, if you're using a smaller end mill, you want to add um, incremental depths. You know, probably like hundred thousandths, fifty thousandths, depending on the diameter. Okay, so let's do another two D contour. This time, let's cut this. Now, because I added the chamfers right here, I need to zoom in really close. I think I, think I added a fifteen thousandths chamfer, so. Uh, if you have any problems with your toolpath, remember the red arrows need to go to the side that's being removed. All right. So if it if it looks like this, it's wrong. Okay, because that would cut to the left of that line. We want to cut to the right. 
Uh, three quarter end mill can handle that. If you're using a smaller end mill, you take multiple depths. Um, height, I'm gonna go to selection. And I'm gonna click right here on this face. And I think we're good. I'm gonna put a compensation type where And if you notice, I, I have my chamfers that I just had to have right there. Looks good. We'll name this side cut. Okay, so now we'll drill this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and center drill it. I didn't tell y'all a center drill earlier, but that was because I originally was going to drop an end mill in there to finish it. But since we're drilling it to size, we'll go ahead and center drill it. Uh, yeah, I'll make this center drill. I'll make it tool number two. It, it doesn't really matter. Whatever tool number makes sense for you. Bruce, what are you doing, dude? Okay, so I got my center drill. Looks good. I'll select the whole face. Now, this is the thing on the center drill. You only want to go like 50,000 deep, right? So, instead of the whole bottom right here, that's the default selection, I'm going to put it on absolute and you just type in minus 0.05. And that, that number could change too. It, it really just depends on on um, what size center drill you're using. Let's make sure that's coming out right. Hmm. And what I'm looking for, see that little preview of the dimple is there? Just make sure that's there. <clears throat> so I'm going to name this center drill. And now I'm going to drill it. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just duplicate this. So you right click on that, go to duplicate. And uh, I think it was a 27th. 2764 drill. So I'll go to edit and we'll make sure that we have the right drill on there. 2764. Okay, so notice my tool number two is a center drill, but I also have the 2764 as uh, tool two. So we're gonna do is we're gonna change that. So I'm gonna right click on it, go to edit tool. Um, make this tool three. Okay, the height tab. This time, just gonna go whole bottom. I'm gonna put it on front view. N notice my tips go into um, the whole bottom. With a uh, fifty thousandths extra, um, let's see. So what you want to do is you want to check this drill tip through bottom, okay? Plus you want to go extra, a little extra too, like thirty thousandths, twenty or thirty. Um, actually, you know what? I told y'all earlier to um, go through this stock. Let's put it on stock bottom. There we go. Uh, if you got anything underneath the part to hold it up um, in, in, in the vise, um, be prepared because that drill is going to drill all the way through. Uh, you can also change this, you know, not really drilling too deep, but you could put a chip break in. It cuts better. 
but it may cut a little bit big from all the pecs. Each time it pecs, it removes a little bit more material. All right, so that's that. I'll go ahead and simulate it. Looks good, flip it over, yep. Cool. Now we need to do the next stop. So I'm gonna go to setup. I'm gonna flip the part over. Uh, model orientation, it's my Z. Um, oops. Name it op two. Okay, so this is gonna be my op two, so the part's gonna be flipped over in the vise. Um, and let's define our stop. So this time we're gonna put it on relative, relative size stock. And just put these at zero. Except for, oh man. So we, we gotta do a little bit of math here. You know, let's just say okay. I'm just gonna put 50,000 for now. So I said the stock was one inch thick. So two inch by two inch by one inch. All right, so what you're gonna have to do, if it's one inch, uh, it may be something else, but you know, this is how you do the math. I said mine was one inch. So we got one inch and we already faced 50,000 off of it. So I go minus 0.05 and the part, is 0.63 tall, so I'm gonna go minus 0.63. So I have 320 thousandths to face off of it. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna go back and edit this op two and stock top 320. sure this looks right yeah okay so we'll go ahead and um, I'm gonna put my origin on model point and let's put it right here Actually, let's stay consistent. Let's go to stock, stock box point. Looks good. So you got 320,000 to face off of it. So I'm gonna go to face. We're using the three quarter end mill. Looks good. Uh, bottom height is going to be the model top. Now, you probably want to add some uh, multiple depths. So we got 320. So 0.320 divide by 2. That's 160. That 3 quarter in mil could probably handle that. Uh, in case you don't actually have a two fluter, let's do this. Let's go 0.32 divided by three, 107 thousandths, roughly. Point 0.107. Looks good. There's your program. So you get op one and op two. 